Yeah. All right. So, like I said, my name is Akwemi Manuels. Again, I'm just rushing to go straight into the uh, nitty gritty of the matter. I'm going to invite up on this webinar two special veterans. The first person is Adekoya Adebayo. Um, I don't know if we can see you, Adebayo. You can turn on your video so that we can see your amazing and handsome face. And then we're going to also welcome tonight on the show Bolu Atefe. Um, can we also welcome Bolu Atefe? So we have these two amazing veterans um, on this webinar tonight, and they're going to be helping us, you know, mm -hmm. taking a deep dive into cross-platform development, cross-platform development. And um, it's going to be amazing, really. I'm so excited because uh, you can't just imagine what you're, the loads of information you're going to be hearing from tonight's webinar. And it's going to be a very, very informative and very educative. So just don't go nowhere. You can, you know, relax on a very nice soft sofa and take a drink, uh, a very cold, chill drink, and just relax as you enjoy this discussion on this webinar tonight. So uh, let's hear from Adebayo. Welcome, Adebayo. Can you just give us a bit, bit of introduction about yourself, uh, what you do, your experience, and all of that? Hi. Um, I work in the Center. Uh, with five years' experience, I am posted I do mobile, web, and desktop application. So that's it. All right. So, um, can we have a bit of introduction from Bolu Atifair? All right. Welcome everyone. I'm I'm Bula Tefe. I'm a mobile. I'm a mobile developer. I work at the um, IT Skill Center also, just like my colleague here. And uh, I want to uh, say welcome once again, everyone, to this powerful um webinar. We are going to be it's going to be exciting, and we're going to get um, a lot of information. Welcome once again. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Bolu and Mr. Adebayo. All right, so straight to the point, right? Um, like we said, we're going to be discussing tonight um, cross-platform development. First of all, for, for the benefit of the doubt, for those who are not really familiar with cross-platform development, right? <clears throat> Maybe they're beginners, they're not even programmers at all. They are just, you know, they just saw this flyer somewhere and they want to just get to know about what is cross-platform development. They've been hearing mobile development. How does it work? So. Can you briefly tell us, any of you, whether Bolu, I think Bolu should go first. Let's hear from you exactly what is cross-platform cross development. What does that even mean? All right, thank you, Mr. Okay. Um, welcome again once, um, welcome once again, everyone. So um, when we're talking about cross-platform development, uh, we're talking about uh, building uh, um, softwares that can both work on multiple devices, just like um, the way the name is self-explanatory, right? Prior to the introduction, or should I say development of so, um, cross-platform development, development, there has been also, or should I say, there have been a bottleneck of um, time management in which when we develop uh, native apps, for example, we develop individually um, Android and iOS, individually there's um, cost, um bottlenecks there is a um, uh, loss of time so cross-platform development in summary is when we can when the ability to be able to build um a single app with a single um, different app that can run on multiple platforms for example we have for mobile we have um, the android platform the ios platform so um cross-platform development is when we can use one single code base to build different um, um same app that can run on multiple OS, which we are now seeing that is um spilling into the web development, right? So now we can use one single code base with different languages. There are so many cross-platform development around the world right now. So we can use a single code base to build different um same same single code base to build the same app across multiple devices. So that's in summary what um, a cross-platform um, software development is. All right, awesome. Thank you very much for that brief explanation of what cross-platform means. So it just means using a single code base to 
build um, you know an app that can be deployed on both iOS and Android, right, and even on the web, right? That's what that's what you just said, right, Mr. Bolu? Yes, that's correct. All right, thank you very much. So let's quickly go to um, Adebayo. Let's hear from you, Adebayo. What do you think about uh, cross-platform development? And what's the benefit, really? What is the benefit of cross-platform development? Uh, is there a difference between cross-platform and hybrid? So I hear people hear hybrid, you know, hybrid mobile apps, and then we have cross-platform. Then we have stuff like Ionic and Cordova, and we have stuff like uh, Swift, Kotlin, so many things to hear about, or to just hear all these jargons. So there is Swift. There is um, Android, Java, there is Kotlin, there is Ionic, there is Cordova, there is Flutter, there is all of these things. So, so is, what's, what's really the advantage of cross-platform over native? So I've said so many things. Let me rephrase the question so that you are, you are, you are clear about my question. So can you tell us specifically what is the difference between cross-platform hybrid apps and native apps? Is there, is there any benefit you know, to building native apps over you know, cross-platform or hybrid apps? Yeah, so um, welcome once again, everyone. Um, like um, my colleague here has said earlier, that cross-platform development is um, simply a single code base that can run on different operating systems. Like, so for example, we have Flutter. Flutter is a cross-platform um, um, software, right? That uh, you have a single code base that can work both on iOS and on Android, even on Mac OS and Windows and different um, operating systems. But native native apps, they work only their specific their, um, their OS specific. If you take for example Swift, Swift is only works on the iOS um, OS. That's the iOS OS. Swift only works on that. Why Java works on Android and the like. So those ones are platform specific. So the difference is that native um, uh, development is platform specific. Why cross platform it works across different OS and even on web also. Let's take for example Flutter. You can use one single code base to work to to run on your web or your mobile, both Android and iOS, even on Linux and Windows and Mac OS. It is that that is. so the advantage is that it is easier. It's easier to be honest. It's it's cost effective. So you just have one single code base. You can just hire engineers that know how to do it. They have one single code base and you can manage all your apps across all the platforms. So that's one major, major um, advantage that cross-platform development has over native um, development. All right, that's awesome, great. awesome, awesome, awesome. So I, I believe, guys, you are you are enjoying you are enjoying what you are hearing and you are learning a bit. So we're taking a deep dive. We're going to be going deeper and deeper as we go, right? So this is just the you know the icing on the cake, the introduction. So we have heard about that. So they've talked about it cross-platform and native and all that. But what I want to ask is, is there something you can build with native that you cannot build with, you know, hybrid apps? Is there a functionality or a feature that you can actually build, that you can build with native that you can never or you will never be able to achieve with um, hybrid apps? Okay, so someone is asking that the volume is a bit low um, from Adibayo, so we might need to increase your your um, mic when, when you're speaking there. So can we hear from Bolu? Is there something you can build with a native app that you cannot achieve with an hybrid app? Okay, so we get to questions, okay. right? I see Lukman, I can see Lukman uh -huh. raising his hand. <laughs> but before you start, you know, asking your questions, just give us about five minutes to just take some of these questions that we have for the guests. Then we'll now take your question. Except it's something very urgent, uh, Lukman. Um, so you are raising your hand, so let's hear you, Lukman. But I want to be sure it's not a question. Can you go ahead, Lukman? Let's hear you, Lukman Flutter. You're raising your hand. You want to say something? Oh, good evening, house. Yeah, I'm just raising my hand. Uh, I just joined the meeting. Uh, that's also no really. Oh, but right. after the meeting, I need to ask some questions. I will, I'll quickly just stand down. So, when you can have it. All right, no but it's an honor to it's an honor to be on this on this meeting. No, you're welcome. You're really welcome. Thanks for joining, and we're happy to have you. Here. So, um, let's go ahead. So, I was asking, um, is there something you can build with native app that you not you never be able to achieve with Android app? Can we hear that from Bolu? All right. So, um, as a, as at now, there's 
I would say there are, there's nothing actually you can't build with native um and you can't build natively that you can't build with all these cross platform um tools, right? So let me just mention when we talk about native, just like my colleague said, we we are mentioning stacks like Kotlin, Java, which is on the Android side, and then Objective C, which is now um, um, deprecated. And let me just say this is fading out and Swift, which we use for the iOS platform, right? As of now, there's not much you can build on the native side that you can't actually build on this cross platform side. Like I mentioned earlier, there are so many things, uh, there are so many uh, things that have been achieved over the um, since the invention of cross-platform cross uh, tools, right? And then there's been a, a, a upward um, graph, or should I say, there's been a lot of improvements to date now um, on cross-platform um, um, environment, right? So the major challenges that was being faced by cross-platform development were security and um, performance. And as of now, there, there's been like the community has really done a great job in like um, bringing all these things down and minimizing it to the lowest level. That it now appears that there's so little that you can that you can not achieve with this cross-platform um, uh, environment. And like I said earlier, there are so many languages you can use for um, cross-platform development across different stacks. So uh, you just there are there are benefits, there are pros and cons to them, but uh, we are talking on two major points, two major stacks that we are going to. Hello, am I the only one losing volume? That we can build right now with native app that we can build um, on cross-platform. All right, thank you so much. So I think we got that. We got that. Um, so let's quickly get into the real differences now. So you've just, you know, introduced us to the differences. You've talked about the two points or the two stacks that we are focused on tonight, which is the Flutter and the React Native stack. So I'm going to go back to Adebayo and quickly ask exactly. So what is, um, give us a bit of background into Flutter. What, give us like an introduction to Flutter. Exactly. What is Flutter? You know, when was it launched? You know, and all of that. Just introduce us to Flutter generally so that people that have not even, heard, that people that have not even heard of Flutter that are here, and how exactly they can have an understanding of what Flutter means and what is all about, what's Flutter all about. So let's hear from Adibayo. Adibayo, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, um, my um, internet was um, a little bit bad, so I didn't get the question. Yeah, so I was saying that, can you give us a bit of introduction into Flutter? Tell us what Flutter is all about. What is Flutter and when was it launched? Who launched it? What company is behind it? And, you know, just introduce us to Flutter generally. Okay, okay. All right. Is my voice clear? Yes, it's clear. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So um, Flutter really is an um, open source framework. Uh, it's a cross-platform framework that was developed by um, Google for building... Uh, natively compiled most platform application using a single code base. So it was developed by um, Google. Uh, the initial release date was, I think, May 2017. So that is that was when it was um, it was released first to the public. It was made public. So it's developed by Google, and there is still Google guys are still maintaining. Though it is open open source really, but the Google guys are the main guys uh, uh, maintaining the, the platform. All right, thank you. What about React Native? Uh, Bolu, can you tell us about React Native? Introduce us to React Native. All right. Um, so uh, just like uh, Flutter, uh, React Native is also a cross-platform, like we have mentioned, when it was introduced in uh, 2015. So um, React Native was inspired by React, which is a framework for developing uh, web apps. Uh, React was um, React was Invent or introduced to the public, which is also open source into in 2015, in 2013. So uh, two years later, um, there is this um, inspiration to build um, native apps with React, which brought about React Native. And uh, ever since then, it has been ever growing. Up. 
to this day. It is, it is, it was, like I mentioned, it was invented by Facebook and it is still, it is still um, continually um, maintained by Facebook to this day. So that is just a summary of how React Native was born. All right, all right, nice. It's always, it's, it's like Google, Google, Google is always, uh, Google is always fighting, having this huge competition with rivals like Facebook, Microsoft. They want to just be the king everywhere. You know, I'm, I was reading today about how Google is trying to release, um, is it Lambda now? Lambda to fight uh, chat GPT and then they even have another one now called, um, the name just escaped me. There's another name for it, it's not, it's not Lambda now. Bad. What? Bad. Bad, bad, BRD. BRD, uh, so they're just coming up with different, they just don't want to go down with, with, with their hands behind their back. <laughs> But anyway, so uh, we can see from what Bolu and uh, Adibayo said is that um, React Native is the senior brother of Flutter because that one came out in 2015. Flutter came out in 2017, right? But I, I was sure Flutter came out in 2017 as a response to React Native that came out in 2015. I, I'm very, very sure if, if we if we dig deep into the comp two companies, realize that Google actually did that because they wanted to respond to, <laughs> to React Native and they always do that. But something about Google is that they always do better. They always come up with something better than you know the other partners or the other guys who are coming up with something very fantastic, right? So Luke, man, like I said, we'll get to questions. I know you are itching, <laughs> you are itching to ask your question, but <laughs> just be patient, right? So let's quickly spend the next five minutes to just do a comparison between Flutter and React Native. So we're going to have some uh, fronts that we want to do the comparison more. So we're going to start with documentation, right? <laughs> get documentation. Can we? Can we? Um, can we start from the ease of learning, the, the, the learning curve? I think that's where it's the, that's the best place to start from. So there are a lot of new beginner, uh, new developers here, people that are probably web developers, they want to go into mobile app development, people that are already mobile app, maybe they just do um, hybrid like Ionic and Cordova. So the, as to learning curve, as to learning curve, which one is the easiest, or let me say the easier one to learn? So say you're coming from a background of PHP, or you're coming from a background of React, for example, which one is easier to learn? Okay, let, don't let me put that context of React because that ultimately puts React Native as an advantage. But let's say you are just a developer with WordPress. So you've been doing WordPress all your life. You are very good with WordPress. You've been doing basic PHP. You've been doing basic, uh, maybe you're even a graphic designer. You do UI UX. You want to go into mobile app development. Which one is easier to learn, React Native or Flutter? Let's start with Adibayo. Anybody, All right. You are muted, yeah. Okay, Opam is clear enough. Yeah, it's voice. Right. Um, yeah. All right. So, um, to be very honest, to be very honest, um, oh, I think Adiba is very, very easy to learn. The learning curve is is so small. Very, very smooth. Very, very. How about now? Is my voice yes, clear now? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Similar to JavaScript. Really. Look at it. And um, so I'll say the learning curve for, for, Rhea, uh, for Flutter is, is and documentation is super. It's nice, so nice. It's well written, well documented. And if you know one thing about Google, Google guys, they are so good. They document things. I think it's just. It's, once you go, go to the docs, you have all you need there. You don't need extra, extra things. You don't even need much tutorials. Just go to the documentation, follow the prompts. It is straightforward. There's no, no idea that I don't like React and its problem. React has a lot of problems. <laughs> so it's very easy to learn. The learning curve is interesting. Okay, so you are saying Flutter is easier than React Native. Okay, now let's hear from the React master, the React Native master there. If he if he agrees with you that Flutter is easier than React Native, Bolu, obviously I'm not going. To, obviously I'm not going to agree with him, right? Um, the facts are there. We all know that um, one of the uh, popular languages in the world right now is JavaScript, right? And then React Native is just JavaScript. It is just purely JavaScript. When you know JavaScript. You, 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 in fact, there are a lot of things that you can use JavaScript for. When we are talking about the learning curve of React Native, you don't, if I'm a web developer 
at the point I would have come in contact with JavaScript, right? Be it PHP, um, normal HTML, CSS, React. JavaScript is it cuts across um, everywhere, right? And then bringing that knowledge right down, straight down into a, a, a framework that can just provide me um, a cross-platform result. I mean, the, the facts are there, you, you can easily get it. The advantage that it has over um, other um, framework is that I don't need to go and learn another new language just because I want to, I want to um, build a software. It gives me the same results, right? So why don't, just, why, why, why don't just, I just take that knowledge of JavaScript and use it to build um, what I want to build? And then the other point I want to bring out is that uh, we, we have, uh, there, there is this community, like there is this large base community, everybody adopts JavaScript, right? So let me just, I want you to see React Native as pure JavaScript, right? And, and if, if you can know JavaScript, which I would agree, or my colleague here will agree with me that JavaScript is easier to learn because mostly everybody gets the nitty gritty of JavaScript almost immediately, right? So if, if we can learn JavaScript, I think that is a big advantage over any other, I don't know, any other cross-platform development because uh, that also, which we use to build Flutter, still some syntax from JavaScript. So then what are we talking about? It's just JavaScript. So I would say JavaScript is king, React Native is better, <laughs> that's just it. All right, okay, well, um, we could we did not hear much of what Adebayo said because of his network, but I'm sure from what you said, you said JavaScript is the base uh, framework for React Native, so that gives React Native a, an easier learning curve. But Adebayo was saying documentation is more robust, and from my research, I realized that documentation for React Native, they said it's, it's updated, but it's not accurate. Why that of Flutter is updated and is complete and is accurate. So there's some, what that means is that some things, that some things you could go online and check in React Native's website documentation and you would copy and paste it and it might not give you exactly what you're expecting, but you will never get out with Flutter. Is that correct, Mr. Uh, Bolu? No, actually. We can, we can actually get the wrong documentation. It is two things. It is either you, you don't have, um, the person doesn't have enough experience to decipher that documentation or he's doing it the wrong way, right? Uh, like I mentioned, the advantage is that uh, we have a large community, right? There is, there, is, there, there, there is a possibility that whatever it is you are going through or whatever it is you are going to be, you are going to be seen as a, as a bottleneck or as a problem, someone has gone through it before and then the solution has been provided. So uh, talking about the documentation, it is always updated, like you said, that's correct. And then I would not say it is everly wrong. It is not, it is not, it is not always wrong. Anyway, we, we did it. Let's hear from the Flutter guy uh, because he's been smiling and looking at you since. So I will, I will allow him to respond to you. Uh, so, so, um, um, Bolu, Bolu, listen, you said if you can learn JavaScript, you will know React Native. Yeah, cool. But that is very similar to JavaScript. So let's come from a point of beginner. Let's come at the beginner level. You can learn JavaScript, you can learn that. That's similar JavaScript and it is very easy. And like I said, the documentation is it's interesting. And even the community, you know, anything Google does, there's always a massive community behind it. There's no doubt about it. You can you can't you can't argue that anything Google does, the community around it crazy. Their documentation is top notch. You don't need you don't need it. like you said, you said the person did not decipher or the person doesn't have enough experience. There's no problem with that in the plotter. Let's go to the documentation. Everything you need there, there, start off. Okay, so let's move to the next. Let's let's move this conversation forward, right? Um, Adebar, let's move it forward. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, can we can we talk about um, can we talk about the performance? Let's compare the, the two platforms on performance. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, Yeah. 
think the recording has stopped and the internet is blown. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes, you're audible. Okay, yes, we can. Okay, so sorry. So my network went off. So can you go ahead and um, so I was saying, can we move the conversation forward? Um, let's talk about performance. Let's compare Flutter and React Native in terms of their performance and the final project size, right? So when you build an app with Flutter, what so let's say you are building a payment platform or whatever, let's just take the same, the same app we build with Flutter, the same app we build on React Native and uh, on Flutter. Which one, which one has a, a larger project size, or does it does it really matter what platform we are using? How, how does the language we are using now, or the stack we are using, the tech stack we are using affect the final project size? Because users have issues with downloading an app that is 60 MB. When I can download one that is 20 MB, because one comes with so many jargons attached to it that it's not necessary for the app, but the stack requires that that will be part of it. So tell me about performance and the project size. Can you compare them? So let's hear from Bolu, um, React Native project size and performance. All right. Um, so when we're talking about um, React Native performance, right? Uh, performance has been one of the uh, problems that the React Native has been battling for years, right? Now, for years now, but currently, um, the performance has been optimized to the level that the user might not even notice any performance glitch right now, right? Because um, uh, just a brief um, summary of how React Native works, uh, we have two threads on, 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 on React Native, right? We have the thread, just, just stay with me now, and then we have the, uh, the, the JavaScript thread, right? So we have things like um, animations, we have things like um, gestures, those, those stuffs are as really performance um, issues over the years, but is for optimization. Uh, we we um, subtly pro-guard and then um, to that I can get on top of my head, right? Many stacks have really come back to like adopt it because the improvements in the performance has gone like the, the, the percentage of the performance. For example, if the performance was at 80%, now I would say it's at, it's at 98% right now because the, the community has done a, a very good work in optimizing the performance that you would not really. Um, miss the difference between a React Native app and a native a native built app, right? Because we all know that native built app has, has the best performance, right? Um, compared to this cross platform, but with the latest um, versions of React Native and the um, uh, and the uh, tools that have been employed uh, employed by the by the community and by Facebook, performance has been wonderful. All right, can we hear from Flutter? Adebayo. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, like um, my colleague here said, um, React Native because the performance we have with React Native is because, you know, you have to convert JavaScript. So you have to like, there's a bridge between uh, uh, the, the scripts for you to run the native platform, right? Amen. But with Flutter, no bridge. So there's no interconnecting bridge for the interactions with the device native components. Everything just works. And, uh, so there's, there's, it's with React, um, Flutter 3. Point, I think 3.3 or so upwards. The performance is crazy. It beats React Native hands down, like hands from the bottom, really. And if we are talking about project size at the end of the day, so if, if I build an app with Flutter and we do the same thing with React Native, at the end of the day, the app size for Flutter is way smaller than React Native because in React Native, you do load modules, everything, both the things you need and the things you don't need, everything just be there. You can't remove it because that's the way it is. But with Flutter, you just need to import only the things you need. There's no extra, extra things. 
and, and the, the performance is, is crazy, it's crazy. And there are improvements almost every, every time. Every new release, there's massive improvement. Now, uh, there was the last they did. So we talked about the new the new um, engine that, that, that is built to even to start rendering 3D and the performance is crazy. When, when it was compared to other cross-platform uh, development tools. So that's that is for me. This one, Flutter 100, React Native Zero. That is for me. <laughs> Flutter 100, React Native Zero. Well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> let's move to the next one before we take questions from the house. I'm sure people have, um, I'm sure there are some mobile app developers on the call and they want to, you know, put in their one or two cents. But before we uh, take questions from the house, let's also quickly talk about the demand. People want to know about the money part. You know, right now, if I want to, as a beginner going into mobile app development, which one is in demand? Which one will earn me, earn me more money? Right now in Nigeria, currently, with the current economy, which one do you think, if I, if I want to learn now, today, I want to learn, and in six months, I want to start earning big money, which one will, earn, will fetch me a, a better chance of earning bigger money? Is it React Native? Should I learn React Native? or I should learn Flutter in terms of demand. So let's hear from Bolu. All right. Um, I think my colleague here will agree with me when I say, uh, just learn React Native, right? Just, just go with React Native because you don't, if anywhere you go to now, If you are seeing um, job offers, everybody knows React Native. We know Flutter is currently being spoon fed. They are just coming up, right? So uh, people are still like uh, skeptical about should I learn it, should I not learn it? It goes down. In, but React Native is here to stay. Is here? It has been here all the years. They are using it. Big top companies use it. Your day to day um, apps use them every day, right? So and then it has a learning curve, like I. I mentioned earlier it's javascript javascript x plus x 2x right so just just go just go with JavaScript. you don't want to go and learn that and that that you can't use it for any other thing JavaScript. you can use it for react yeah you can even in your php you can you inject javascript inside other languages javascript so it has advantage when you learn react native you you can easily switch from that react native to other um other software, other um, frameworks. And then the demand, my colleague here will agree with me that he sees more of React Native than even his Flutter, right? So, hands down, like you mentioned earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hands down on this one. Anyway, before we say hands down, uh, React Native win the demand. Let's hear from the Flutter man, <laughs> Mr. Adivayo. Do you agree that if I, if I want to learn now for those- All, all right. You agree that Flutter is um, React Native is what they should go and learn, and they will start any money because there are more projects out there in React Native than Flutter. Is that what you're agreeing to? Uh, okay, so uh, I will agree to uh, because you know in here in Nigeria we are we don't quickly adapt to things. To be honest, um, old project, like most of the apps yeah. that are out there. Are very honest. And um, you know, people are now looking for people that will maintain current apps. And let me not lie to you, just learn Flutter, right? See, uh, we are we are not we are international, right? To get international gigs, just learn Flutter. It's in demand. Like almost every time I get um, um, offers, it's demand. To be honest, just just then forget. Let's let's Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, we, you get jobs in Nigeria. But let's go international. Let's let's bring the money home. Just learn, just learn that. Learn from. All right. Okay. So I'm I'm hearing two things now. I'm hearing in Nigeria. So I think I'm hearing that if you want to if you want to make money in Nigeria, then it's React Native. If you want to earn in dollars, you should do Flutter. So I think I will leave that for the audience to judge. <laughs> so if you want to earn out currency, you learn Flutter. If you want Absolutely. to, earn, if you want to earn in Naira, do React Native. All right, I think that that that's nice. So um, let me just allow the house to ask questions from you guys um, before I ask my few last few questions. Um, Lukman, you are up. 
I know you've been there waiting to ask questions so far. I'll make a contribution. Uh, let me see if Lukman is still on the call. Lukman Flutter, if you're there, you're, it's time for you to say something. If anybody has any question in the house, you can simply chip it in or a contribution or any question at all. And if there is none, we just move on. Any question for Adibayo and... Uh, somebody says that oh, Flutter is not paying uh, Adibayo for his uh, few points. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next question. So what I want to ask is that really, what is the future? Most people, as most people have been saying online that um, Flutter is going to eventually replace React Native, right? And simply because of the fact that you can use Flutter to now build desktop apps uh, for Apple TV, for wearables, even though it's not on, it cannot build them um, Apple Watch yet. Uh, they have that limitation of they can't build, you can't use Flutter to build an Apple Watch app yet, but you can build desktop app mobile app and then web apps, right? So for React Native, of course, because they cannot build web, web apps. So, but there has been this rumor and this debate online that Flutter will eventually replace React Native. Um, do you agree, Bolu? What's the future? Is it React Native or Flutter? What's the future? What do you see? All right, so um, just to, just to um, um, comment on React Native can build web app, right? So uh, React Native can actually build web apps and build um, for TVOS and then also for WatchOS, right? It's right there in their documentation. And then you can also build um, web apps on React Native through uh, this web SDK. Um, you can easily build with React Native. So there are no, there are no actual limitations to building, building things or there's nothing Flutter can build that React Native doesn't currently have access to it. Also, always even before um, Flutter invented their own um, um, stacks of building for all these um, platforms, right? So I am I don't think I don't think Flutter React um, replace React Native, right? Because where do you want to put all this? It will just keep improving, right? Probably they'll be on the same level or React Native supersede it like so you can you 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 can all, all you can just see that react native over the years we we improve like they have also always been improving right in terms of security in terms of performance in terms of um, variety of um, cross platform um devices so i don't think there's any reason why um flutter is going to um, replace react native not now not in the near future <laughs> okay, let's hear from Adebayo. Uh, but did you say that Flo uh, React Navy can build desktop apps? Because I've not, I've not really heard that. But yes, 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 you can, you can build, build for Windows. Apps. Yes, yes, you can oh, build for Windows. Interesting. I'm just learning that now. Yes. All right, Adebayo, do you and what do you see? The oh, it can build. It can build what? Mac OS. Mac OS. So it can also be for Mac OS. Seriously, wow, that's great. So Adebayo, can we hear from you? What do you see in the future? Do you see Flutter replacing? React Native completely? Uh, well, I won't say replace, to be honest. Um, you know, these technologies are great technologies and they are here to stay. But what I will say is in the nearest future, most companies will adopt Flutter and dump React Native because it is easy and it is easier to maintain even. Because, okay, unlike React Native, you want to build it, uh, your desktop, you want to build a single code base with your desktop, where you need to install one or two things. You need to do extra, extra stuff. But with Flutter, it's not, that's not the case. Just one code base, all you just need to do is Flutter run, build Windows, build APK, build for Mac OS. It's, it's as simple as that. You don't need extra, extra tools because what React Native does is they bring in extra tools to conform it to work on those platforms. Why Flutter? Just at the go. So I see, I see companies adopting, a lot of companies now moving their platform from React Native to Flutter. You can check, you can check the stats. At least um, there's, there's a six, I think 64 point something to say. I can't really get the um, percentage of companies that moved their apps from React Native to, to Flutter in, in a survey that was done. Okay, why? Why, did, don't they, have, why did they move? Why did they move from React Native to Flutter? Okay, because of the performance, number one, 
and the 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 uh, the way it, the way um, the, they can manage they can manage their, their code base because they were having difficulty managing the different for the different um, OS they have really but okay. Flutter solves that a single code base one thing and then all right the rest is it. okay because of the performance and the code base management okay yeah. so it's easier for them to manage for all platforms just but well, you can do that with reality since the um, bolu confirmed that you can actually build mac os windows and all of that even uh, though it's not it's, it's not as easy as it's not as easy as um as um flutter not he knows that. he knows that he knows that you, you know like you said if you want to build uh, for web now you need to use expo something something you need to use extra something okay. for you to be able to do that but with flutter it's just at a go all right. So somebody is asking on the chat box. Um, only only Kachuku is asking. Um, how long did it take you to learn or to master Flutter, Adibayo? So if one wants uh, to well, learn now, I, I will not. Yeah, because you know I've been in um, development over a long time, so it was easier. Uh, it was I think in one month I was already I already had something like okay, this is an app I can build. So in one month, I so I wouldn't want you to compare. Uh, I wouldn't want you to use my example, my case as an as an example, really, because I already have experience with all of these things. So it's easier for me to grasp those things. But to be very honest, I think the average time it will take you from beginner to not, I will not say master, to be able to achieve something, you know, okay, yes, I can take up a job, like a sidekick to, to actually build something. I'll say minimum of three months. That's what I'll say. You can't you can't master it in three months. That's a lie. Don't let anybody lie to you. But at least you can do something. You learn the nitty gritty, the basics. At least you you will be there. That, okay, I can actually do these things. And the documentation is interesting. There's a lot of community. You can join different groups. There are people out there that will answer your question if you have any issues. So that's that's it for me. Okay. So you're saying within a space of three months, you should be able to build your first app or build your first job, take your first job and build something in three months or six yeah. months. Yes, three to six. If you are serious, so not beginner, serious. beginner, zero, zero mobile app development. Zero, zero, zero mobile, just follow the prompts on the talk. Yeah, right. You'll you, you, you be surprised. All right, so only Kachuku, you have your answer there. React Native, how long did it take you to learn React Native? Yeah, just like my colleague, yeah, we can compare we coming from the experience of um, another stack with a, a pure be beginner, right? So um, with serious, uh, I would say with serious dedication on React Native, uh, you, you, I would just stretch it also to three to six months, right? Because you also need to get the fundamentals of these languages that we are using, right? For React Native, you need to like master, you know, I would not say master, but get the um, core fundamental of fundamentals of JavaScript and then that for Flutter, right? So uh, you need to get the um, the core basics and then the fundamentals of these um, building blocks to be able to um, to be able to stretch it over to three to six months, right? So uh, I will also put it to three to six months to be able to take up like um, a job. Within those three to six months, you would have um, built a number of projects daily. I mean, daily is not, you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. You don't just pick it in the morning and then come back the next three days. You are not going to get it like that, right? You have to like dedicate um, a number of time. Uh, and then also you need to reach out to people that, that can guide you. You need like a roadmap on it to get the fundamentals and also to, um, to should I say, um, almost in the intermediate, right? But not, not I won't say master it, but at least to be able to take up a project. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bolu and Sadibaya. So for those who are on the on the call, um, as we wrap up, I'm dropping a link for everyone on the chat box. I'm sure you should be able to see the link already. Um, the link is just a link to a Google form. So if you are interested in learning mobile app development from some of these veterans and some other veterans that are not on this call, you can join that link. You can register on that link for a free mobile app development training that will be coming up soon, very, very soon, in more like two weeks or a week or so. So if you want to learn Flutter, you want to learn React Native, just drop your, indicate your interest by clicking that link on the chat box right now, and then you'll be able to, you know, indicate your interest. 
um, and so that we can reach out to you and then tell you how you can join that free class. It's a free class. Um, so if you're interested in learning mobile development, this is the opportunity for you to learn mobile development, you know, free, free of charge. Um, it's going to be over about four Saturdays and then it's going to be strictly online. It's not physical class, so you can join from anywhere you are, whether you're within Lagos, outside of Lagos, you can join. So click on that form right now and quickly fill it up and then, you know, someone will reach out to you as you also join the WhatsApp group um, on that link. So finally, let's hear from you. So how do you see um, artificial intelligence affecting coding. People have been saying that it looks like all developers will lose their job in the next five years uh, or in the next 10 years because OpenAI and Lambda and you know all the artificial intelligence war, or let me call it the AI war that is going on now, which is true. Because I can see um, a, 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 what's the name of this guy now? The co-founder of one company just resigned to go and start his own AI company. I think he's the co-founder of Upspot or is it Upspot or Google? I can't remember, but there is a co-founder, a very, very powerful co-founder that just re resigned, you know, from his company to go and start an AI company because a, an AI war has just started. It's a race to whoever is going to get to a point where we have a sentient, uh, is this sent, is this sent, sent yet? I can't remember, I don't know what they call that stuff now. But I think they've said the, if something is called sent, sentient, is it sentient now? Is, is the word sentient? I think it's sentient. So it means that, um, artificial intelligence can now can now reason by itself or can now um, more like it now it's now become human it's now wiser than humans so or it's now become human so it can feel right so it's more like it have it has emotion so you can reason based on emotion so but they have not gotten there yet but I think they are trying to raise this artificial intelligence war trying to race towards that place where um, you know robots or AI can actually interact with humans like humans so but coming back to the question how do you see AI affecting coding do you see People that are beginner, beginner, just you know, going to an AI um, library somewhere and speaking to it, and then it will dump out all the answers to all your coding app and everything that you want to build, and you just modify one or two things, and you have a, your app ready. Can we hear? Can we hear more about that? Yeah. So let's hear from um, Adibayo first. Yeah. So um, I'll say the advent of AI will actually improve or is actually improving our lives as developers, to be very honest. So um, I, I don't see AI taking, uh, taking away our jobs anytime soon. I'm not, not even anytime, it's not going to take, uh, take away our jobs because really as the, 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 the AI, the invention of the AI is actually helping us because even for example, let me give you an example. Today, when I was working on something, I was stuck at a point, I had to, I even have to reach out to Bolu. <laughs> Earlier this morning to ask him if he has done something like that. So I said, charge GPT to the rescue. I went there, so he didn't give me what I wanted. He gave me something, but it was not, it wasn't, it wasn't the right answer, to be honest, because I tried it and it didn't work. It wasn't the right answer. And so I, I found my way and I was able to get it done. So it's it's, it's not going to take away your job, right? So it will help you improve. So now if if I have any blocker, I just go there put the prompt, correct prompt. You have to learn how to use it. So don't just put something in here. It don't give you what you want. So you, you have to know how to, to ask the question for it to keep the answer you want and to be able to use it to develop, it to, it to make your develop, uh, development time even faster. So it's not going to take away our jobs. It's going to help us. The beauty to actually help. And I'm, a, I'm actually enjoying it. All right. So, so, you, yeah. so you are you are saying you are already leveraging uh, Chat GPT to actually you know enhance your programming um, speed and solving issues that you are stuck with, right? So it's actually helping you. So it's more about leveraging it than replacing what you're doing, right? So let's hear, let's hear from Bolu. But some people be beg to differ that um, actually eventually to be able to you just tell it that write me build an app for. Uh, that connect Wi-Fi to peer to peer and then do this using Flutter with this, with this, just give it all the right prompts, all the criteria, and it's going to dump out everything and build the app, and it's going to build it, run a build, and then give you the APK, or give you the DMG that you can install on your Mac OS right there and there. So that way, don't you think it's going to replace the job? Because that's somebody's $15,000 $15, that has just been you know, dumped out in three minutes. So Bolu, let's hear from you. All right, um, to buttress my colleague's point, right? Um, I'll just say this thing came at the right time. AI has just improved at the right time because it's really making development fast. I don't need to, sometimes I don't even need to reach out, right? 
And um, before my colleague reached out to me this morning, I was I was sitting on chat GPT, right? He didn't give me the correct answer, but I was able to draw from three resources. He gave me the first answer. For example, he gave me like a whole syntax and I was like converted to this syntax, he did so. And I had to bring another resource, like combining two, three, four resources. If you don't know how to use it, if you don't know what to ask it, it won't give you the results, right? So you need to, you need the technical know-how of what you want to do. You can, someone that has never coded or has never even handled VS Code in his life goes there and say, build me something. We will leave there confused, right? It will always get better. We know AI, they are working on it every day to get better. And then if he gets to the point where he's, he's um, threatening our job, he wants to take our job, I think we can just pour water on it. And I, I mean, it's just a machine. Well, I'm poor water away <laughs> on uh, on cloud servers in one highly protected underground uh, system somewhere in in one desert that you don't have an idea that it exists. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so that will bring us to the end of this show. I think I don't want us to go past one hour. But I just want to thank everyone that has joined. Um, it's been amazing. I believe you enjoyed the conversation. I enjoyed it myself. Thank you, Bolu. Thank you, Adibaya, for joining. Um, we, are, we, are, we are so much um, happy to have you guys. But the last question on the chat box, so I, I just take this question. The person says, uh, Victor Ogunwe, he says, uh, my question is someone that already knows JS, that's JavaScript, should still go and learn that to work with Flutter, right? What specialty should support that? Uh, also, does that help to do AI? Because JavaScript does, ah, I'm trying to read this <laughs> short hand. Also, does that help to, to do AI? Because JavaScript does that, which is the parent of React Native. So he's saying that um, that, right? Does, can you use that for AI? Like if you know that, can you do artificial intelligence? Can you do machine learning with that if you know that? And then does JavaScript support his parent, Java, uh, React Native? Uh, he says, I think React Native helps to master JS, which is JavaScript, which would also uh, always dive you into other areas. So well, that's what Bolu said. So if you know JavaScript, it helps you to, you know, jump into other JavaScript framework like Nest, like uh, React itself, like um, other things that, you know, <clears throat> they are React based. So you are correct, uh, Victor. But the question you asked first that if you already know JavaScript, should you go and learn that to work with Flutter? If you know JavaScript already, do you still need to learn that to, to do Flutter? Yes, yes, you still need to learn that to, to do Flutter because that is like the building block. That is a Flutter is the that framework. So you need to learn that. Oh, nice. And All that right. is so if you know JavaScript, forget it, you already know that. It's just the syntax here and there. It's, it's almost the same thing. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. We really like um the show. Uh in the absence of no other questions, you know, so welcome. Uh you didn't see my my uh, message on the chat box quickly. So I, you were on the other link for long, but you just joined now and we are wrapping up. So maybe I will send you the link. Um, you know, I'll send you the link so that you can watch, you can do a replay. So thank you, Abraham. Thank you, Adibaya. Thank you, Adioye Olatubosu. Thank you, Adishola. Oluwada Rasimi, Anuzike Precious, and Tony, uh, Daniel, Danny Flames, Dijango, Dara, Dara, Didayo, Inex Felix, Isaac, King, Martini, Lekon, Obudikpe, Olariwaju, Olabanji, Olatunde Rashi. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. It's a long list of names, but I just want to say thank you for joining. we we'll see you another time again. We're going to have these webinars frequently on different topics, um, you know, just to enlighten people. Like I said, we are having a free mobile app class very soon in about a week or two. If you want to learn mobile app development for free, either Flutter or React Native, click the link in the chat box. There is a link in the chat box. Click that link now and register for that free class. It's very important that you register so that we can reach out to you once the class is about to start. You're going to learn it for free in about four weekends. Um, yes, it's going to commence in about a week or two. So it's like starting next weekend or upper weekend. So we need to confirm based on election prediction. So, but it's going to start either next weekend or upper weekend, but just register now so that you can get a mail from us to know when exactly it's going to start. Right, it's a free, it's a free mobile app development class uh, for everyone who wants to learn mobile app development. So thank you guys. I uh, will see you um, another time. Have a lovely night, rest. Thank you, Bolu. Bye.